Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a blessed day in the Lord. Welcome to another time in worship with the First Mayfield Church. Go ahead and prepare yourself wherever you are. If you're on the teleconference line, prepare yourself for a wonderful worship, a powerful worship like none other. For those of you on Facebook, go ahead and start sharing and start your watch parties. It's time to worship. For those of you on YouTube, go ahead and like, subscribe. Go ahead and start commenting and letting us know where you are. Come on, let's prepare to worship right now because this is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be made glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. As we prepare, as we are going to be ushered into the presence of God, we pray that you are prepared and ready. Holler next door and tell somebody, it's time to get on for worship. Text someone and tell them, it's time for worship, because we're going to give God what he deserves on today. As you're preparing right now, we ask and pray that you do so in such an awesome way. Let's give God all the energy and all the vitality that he needs in order to hear us as we praise him today. Come on, let's pray together. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we humbly bow and say thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this day. God, we ask right now that you receive us in your presence. Allow us to give you glory today. Put it in us, God, the energy and the vitality that we need to give to your name, to give to your, your spirit, to give to giving your name glory right now. God, allow us to remember everything that you've done from last week to today. Allow us to give you glory for everything in our story. Oh God, we pray now, God, that you hear us as we give your name glory. We are praying for a healing for someone. We're praising for a deliverance for someone else. We pray, God, that your manifold blessings will fall down today. Because when praises go up, uh, somebody said blessings will come down. We pray it happen in this place. We pray it in this cyber sanctuary that you make it happen for us today. God, we pray for a word like none other for us. Now, Lord, we pray that you'd release us from the things that would hold us back to give you glory in this moment. Now, Lord, we ask these things and many others in the precious, powerful, and magnanimous name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We ask and pray right now. Let's get into it with our worship leader and let's give God glory. Welcome to worship this morning. Well, come on, everybody, lift your hands in this place today. All hell, King 
Jesus. All hell, King Emmanuel. All hell, King Jesus. All hell, King Emmanuel. I'm going to do it one more time. Y'all sing with me. All hell, King Jesus. forever Mighty God, we 
set your glory upon the heavens and the earth. Glory of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars. No praise is high enough to express how great. Somebody ought to bless God right now. 
bless the mighty God that we serve. Put your hands together wherever you are. Go ahead and start clapping because he's a mighty God. And he's so mighty that he's blessed you for one more day. That deserves a praise. That deserves a thank you. That deserves a holla. That deserves a hallelujah. Because he's wonderful. Oh, yes, he is. He's wonderful. God bless him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank God for his presence and his power. We thank him for all that he means to us and how he has blessed us in the midst of wherever we are. God has increased our territory and he has given us the blessing of his presence and his promise. You ought to just thank him right there because he's a good God. Yes, he is. We welcome you this morning to the First Mayfield Church, FMMBC Charlotte. We're thankful to have you. Go ahead and just be welcomed into this presence and into the presence of God. Thank you for worshiping with us today, and we are thankful to have you today. I know it's going to be a wondrous thing because I just believe God has something special for us. And he has a special design and custom design for us to receive a blessing from him today. A few things, and I will, I'm, we're going to proceed into uh, the preach word. I just want to say thank you to all of you who were patient with us last week in our Bible studies and are missing our intercessory prayer. But happen this week, we're back into the normal flow of things. On Monday night, we will have, tomorrow night, we will have our intercessory prayer. So we want you to be a part of that at 7 p.m. Then on Wednesday at noon and at 7, noon, noonday Bible study, and then Wednesday at 7 with our Wednesday evening conversation. We would that you join us, be with us, and let's have that wonderful time of studying, sharing, and praying together. I'm reminded also that this evening we will work, we will fellowship, we will have our Zoom fellowship with our youth tonight at 7 by way of Zoom. And so I would that all of our young people and parents get them on, let's get on, be there with us at 7 p.m. And we look forward to having you share with us and it's going to be an awesome experience. You ought to be there with us. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And I know God's going to bless us. Thank God for all of our young people. And we want you to be a part of it. So if you're in the greater city of Charlotte or if you're outside of the city of Charlotte and you want to be a part of our Zoom fellowship, that link or that actual ID, meeting ID has been posted on our Facebook page. We pray that all of our young people will join us and let's have a great time in God. Next, uh, next of all, I want to be in continuous prayer for those of us who are uh, making our way through whatever. Um, I, I want to send out uh, special prayers to those who are going through difficulty, whether it's physical therapy, chemotherapy, uh, whether it's dialysis. We're praying for you. And whether you've had a uh, bad diagnosis from the doctor here on earth, uh, the doctor Jesus gives you a better diagnosis. And we're praying much for you. For those who've lost loved ones through death, we ask and pray uh, that you'd hear us uh, praying for you, giving you encouragement, and encouraging you to do even better. Uh, I want to uh, make special mention of a couple of persons. Uh, talk with Sister Melinda James the other day, and we're praying for her and her family at the loss of a family member, and I would that you would encourage her and pray for that family in a mighty way. Would you uh, also pray for those who've lost uh, family members, those if you're connected or heard about the uh, mass uh, shootings in Rock Hill the other day, uh, please be in prayer for those persons and all across our country we see so much uh, going on. We want to pray for those persons uh, for the loss of life, uh, whether it's the shooter or whether it's the person uh, who is uh, the victim. We want to be sure to pray for them and pray with them. And if it's connected to anyone, we want to be sure uh, that we encourage them in God and strengthen them in the Word of God. Just the other day, um, 
I was informed by a group that wants to do mobile vaccinations. They are coming to our church. And so I want to let everyone know in our community, and I want our church family to know as well, uh, we have been selected as a vaccination site, and we will be doing so the end of the month. So if you received a text message from our office and our office personnel, Sister Reese, Yes, that is true. We are going to do so. And we want to make sure if you have the vaccine, if you've already had it, that's wonderful. But if you have not, or if you know someone, please refer them to our office and we're going to prepare ourselves to help our community be better. We want to slow the spread. We want to we want to knock this virus out. We want to be a change agent in our community, and we'd love for you to help us as we prepare for this. Now, when will this happen? This will happen the end of the month. So we want you to be prepared, at least referencing or saying, hey, I've got a friend who would love to come be a part of it. And uh, if you want to send that uh, number, how many people it is, that's wonderful because we have to have an estimate to give to the mobile vaccination company that's going to take care of that. So we want to be in wonderful care and wonderful planning in doing so. So I'll need your help and we ask and pray that you do so. And even if you're not in the greater city of Charlotte, we want to make sure that you're secure and that you're safe in all of this. So I'm praying that you'll call our church office and let's get it together. Let's do great things for God. Let's get better. Let's, let's be healed in God and let's be healed in this world. Thank you so very much and I want you to continue doing even better. All right, there's so many things happening. I'm hearing so much from our church family, our extended church family. We pray much for each person and each, uh, each connecting body, whether you're in the greater city of Charlotte, whether you're in South Carolina, Georgia, uh, whether you're in Fayetteville or Rockingham or Wilmington or wherever you are, we're thankful that you're joining the First Mayfield Church and we're blessed to have you worship with us each time and study with us and we thank God for you. Before I forget, please pray and reach out in prayer uh, with our, uh, our extended, the Ferguson extended family and the loss of a loved one in my wife's uh, extended family or wife's family uh, which is my family. God bless us. And as I said the other night, uh, we are celebrating some 12 years of marriage in a couple of days. And so if you see us honeymooning again, we're doing so. We'll be holding hands and doing all that wonderful stuff that we do. Amen. We thank God for you praying for us and sending your encouragement and your celebratory uh, statements to us over Facebook or what have you. Uh, God bless us and we thank you for helping and for uh, celebrating that. I want to celebrate someone else. I want you to continue doing that as you celebrate marriage and celebrate families and celebrate togetherness. We want to continue doing so in a mighty way. And I would that you would help us do great things for the cause of Christ. All right, I'm going to get out of the way because it's time for the word. Our worship leader is going to come. We're going to bless God in a mighty way. Would you worship and prepare for the word of God?
How many people love him this morning? I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you. you this morning Jesus I love you Jesus I worship and adore you just want to tell you Lord I love you more than anything I love Jesus, I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. See, I really want. Love you, Lord. I really want to love you, Lord. I really want to love you, Lord. I really want to love you more. I really want to love you more. Y'all sing with me. Say, I really want to love you more. 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 Say, I love you. And I love you. 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 Lord, I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, you. Lord, I love you, Jesus. bowed, eyes closed, hearts praying. God, we love you so much. We thank you for your presence, your power, your preeminence. We praise you right now for who you are and who we are in you. We ask now, God, as we humbly bow before you, 
that you would mold us and make us, shape us and form us after thine own will, for thou art the potter and we are the clay. Pray now, God, that you'd keep your hands on us, shape us and form us, do your thing, God, and allow us to hear from you. Now, Lord, we pray that you would in your precious son Jesus' name, God, bind the power of the evildoer, hinder his efforts so that we would hear you clarion clear. Then, God, bind self so that we don't get in the way of our own blessings. As you do so, God, we pray that you receive us giving your name glory for all that you do in our lives. God, now allow me to decrease that you would increase in this place. Show forth your will, way, and word. We thank you now, God, for what you're going to do. As you hide me behind the cross, God, allow your word to go forth. Allow, now, Lord, allow someone to feel and to hear and to experience the will, way, and word of our God. Now, Lord, allow now the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts to be accepted in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, we love you right now, God. The power is in your name. We ask this in the precious, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with us real quick to the seventh chapter, the seventh chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke. Luke's gospel chapter seven, Luke's gospel chapter seven. And I want to look for a few moments. I want to start reading at verse 11 of chapter 7 of Luke's gospel. Luke 7, uh, chapter 7, verse 11. And I'll be reading in your hearing in the King James translation, Luke 7 and 11. When you find that place, you are to be blessed. But we ask that you stand and he at the hearing, the reading of God's word. Chapter 7 of Luke's gospel, verse 11. It reads this way. Uh, in Luke 7 and 11 in the King James translation and it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain and many of his disciples went with him and much people now when he came nigh to the gate of the city behold there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bear, and they uh, that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. Thus, thus ends the reading of these few verses of chapter 7 of the Luke's Gospel, verses 11 through 15. May the Lord add a rich blessing to his red word. And you may be seated in the presence and power of God. And we thank God for the hearing and the reading of God's word uh, today. I want to tag this text, especially around verses 14 and 15. I want to tag this text. Uh, I want to talk about a ministry that prolongs life. A ministry that prolongs life a ministry that prolongs life a ministry that prolongs life would you turn to someone or either put it in the comments or text it to somebody uh, would you repeat after me now neighbor pastor's getting ready to preach a ministry that prolongs life a ministry that prolongs life a ministry that prolongs life you know, throughout the long years of uh, our pilgrimage on earth, God has been seeking and trying his best to impress upon us that it is his desire that we might have life, and if I can quote it right, and have it more abundantly. And, and it is for some strange reason, some mysterious moment in some distant, undateable day in the past, when God took time and knelt down to the face of the earth and down to a lump of clay and breathed uh, the breath of life 
into the nostrils of a sculpted lump of clay. He stopped a while and stamped his divine image upon it and called it a living soul. God has blessed humanity with the gift of life and the, ne and the necessary support systems to develop and sustain life. Well, uh, you know, brothers and sisters, in this time that we occupy and in this time period, uh, there are a whole lot of people who have a difficulty with living and with a life like ours. And, and we don't, we, I don't know if we have not learned enough from not only the pandemic, but from its effects on life itself. It, it, uh, you know, we can, learn, we can learn so much if we would just listen, look, and believe. You know, it, it kind of reminds me, you know, we can learn a lot from uh, that little girl who, who, who got lost in the meadows. And a farmer uh, found her and said, don't worry, little girl, I I'll get you home. And she said, I, I, yes, I, I know you will. I know you will. And, 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 and because I was waiting for you. The farmer asked the little girl, how could you know I was coming uh, to save you? Uh, because when I approached you, all I heard uh, from you uh, was that you were reciting the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. How could you know that I was coming to save you? She said, yes, I, yes, she answered, you, you see, you see, I, I, I'm just a little girl, and, 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 and God knows that I'm lost, and I, I didn't know how to ask God uh, to help me, but, but I, didn't, I didn't know the letters, so, so I'm, I, I was just saying the letters, and I figured God could put them together better than I could. If we would just let God arrange the letters and the letter of life, we would all do better off. I mean, you know, a, a spiritual rumor has been out for centuries that uh, the vaults and the coffers of heaven are overflowing with treasures that are so exquisite that it lies beyond the capacity of, human, of the human mind to conceive or to dream of what's in those vaults. Both uh, Isaiah and, 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 and the Apostle Paul have reported that I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But no matter how dazzling and glorious the unrevealed treasures of heaven may be, nothing is in its inexhaustible storehouse can be prepared uh, to, with, with this precious gift we have of life. We, we, may not, we, may not, we may not have everything we want. Our family may be falling apart. We may be frustrated on a dead-end job or our health may be failing. We may have pain in our heart, tears in our eyes, burdens to bear. But irrespective of these painful realities, it's still a blessing to be alive. When God touches you with his hand of mercy and opens your eyes early in the morning to greet, uh, to greet you with the light of a brand new day, we ought to know that you are a recipient of the greatest and most cherished gift of God that God has to give, uh, and that is life. The quality of, of, of our circumstances notwithstanding, life, my brothers and sisters, is a blessing. Life, life, life is a wonderfulness. It is, it is, if you will, it is so wonderful to be alive. Somebody ought to just stop a while and just say amen right in the comments or you ought to shoot up a heart or a thumbs up somewhere. Somebody on the teleconference line ought to just lay the phone down and just go to Holland. I'm thankful to be alive. I mean, really, uh, life has its complex problems, uh, yes, but it's all, it also has its infinite possibilities. 
Life has its stubborn obstacles, but it also uh, has its awesome opportunities. Life has its grave injustices, as we see on the television screen about the case of the officer in Minnesota. But it also, life also has its unfailing mercies. Life has its jokes, but it also has its joys. God has designed life in such a way that it has no rival. Life is such a wonderful experience. Life is such a glorious experience that its true essence cannot be measured by the length of years, the balance of a bank book, or our socioeconomic status. Uh, though it, 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 it be lived for only a moment, life is the best gift that God has to give. Yeah, 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 yet, yet despite all of its wonderful and uh, its wonderfulness and its gloriousness that's about life, we seem to be passing through a perilous period when the idea of the sacredness and the preciousness of life has fallen on hard times. A generation has uh, has 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 grown up among us that uh, that that appear to have declared war on life. Our streets have become combat zones. Look around Charlotte. I, I, just take time. Uh, th th there's somebody going down every week. All across the city, there are billboards that are talking about not COVID-19 pandemic uh, primarily, but they're talking about the pandemic uh, that is going after the sanctity of life itself, whether young, old, middle-aged, whatever. Uh, our streets have become combat zones. Our homes have become prison cells. And each of us has become a potential target for violent elimination. Life as God intended it, 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 it as God has said, intended it, it, it was uh, to be reverenced, to be respected above all else. But in these days, life has become mighty cheap. In these days, a life can be snuffed out for little or nothing. Two fellas can get, up, get in an argument about nothing and all of a sudden nothing becomes something and one brother shoots another brother. In these days, a, a, a life can be taken out just for the thrill of it. In these days, a life can be taken for a diamond ring, a gold chain, for something you say on a social media post or I borrow Judas's uh, payment. You can be taken out for 30 pieces of silver. A spirit of evil has seized the soul of this generation. Rather than being thrilled and challenged by the opportunities that life affords, young people are attracted and obsessed by the dark, dusty depths of death. Everything they prize already has the signature of death engraved on it. Their values are the values of death. They prefer profits to people, riches to righteousness, fame and fortune to faith and future. And, I'd, and they'd rather try their luck than trust the Lord. Oh, 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 don't, 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 don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. I, I haven't forgotten you. I, I, how sad it is that our young people are dying so soon in such large numbers and in such violent ways. Ah, uh, but let me, uh, let me just give you some facts real quick before I get to the text. I promise you I won't mess with you long, but the infant, infant mortality rate is higher among us than in some undeveloped countries. And I know we're all concerned about those children at the border, but what about the children in your community? For us, African Americans, pecan tan people, the lifespan has declined for the first time since morality rates have been recorded. For us, if a black man lives to turn 40, it's almost a miracle. Death is all around us. Genocide, fratricide, homicide, su or suicide, they're all there. Whatever the cause, the result is the same. Death claims the body. Death has declared war on us. 
and we have allowed death to become our friend. And don't, uh, don't, don't get so happy. Don't get so uh, overexcited about young folk because there's some of us who are a little older in age. We've been around a couple of moons and we've seen a couple of sunrises and sunsets. We too also play uh, the death game with the, uh, we play the game with death with ourselves because we try anything and think that we can get by. In our community, like nowhere else, death is big business. If you don't believe me, uh, look around sometime and just notice how many funerals are happening. Death is happening more than anything in our community. And it's not just a sad and tear jerk moment. Death for us has become big business. Yes, it is. Uh, something has, is wrong in the world. Something wrong with our health care. Uh, I, 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 know, I know you didn't come here for this, but it's all right. Uh, stay right there where you are. I promise you, you need to hear this real well. If we could live a little bit better, a little bit healthier, exercise just a little bit more, take off some of the stuff we have, not only the weight, uh, but, but the stuff that so easily besets us in the natural, we could be a whole lot better. Death has never before taken out so many of us than in this last year. Death was never intended to be the booming business that it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was meant uh, 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 as a nice gesture, but it has claimed us more than not in over a year. And not just uh, the young, some of us in between, some of us uh, on, uh, in a season age, but death is having such a heyday that it looks like there's a better living uh, in dying than it is living. One day, one day all of us have to walk the last mile of the way, see our last sunrise, enjoy our last party. I know, I know I'm not talking to nobody on, on this live because y'all super saved. Y'all super saved. You super saved. But you'll enjoy your last party, have your last laugh, Say a final farewell to family and friends and go uh, with uh, that dreadful visitor whose presence is so foundly, profoundly felt with us and among us. One day, all of us will have to take that last ride and we will exit this world. Uh, but, but we're not supposed to die until we've lived to a right time that the Lord has chosen. Now, now. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I, I shouldn't go there. This is not a funeral sermon, but I, can, can, can I just say what I need to say? Uh, it's right here in the text. Keep your Bibles open. I pray that you'll read, read this and look at it. When we study the miracles of Jesus, we will see that he performed uh, the miracle of prolonging life. He raised three people from the dead. Thank you very much. I know I'm in school. I'm trying to help you as well. Uh, come on, Bible readers, and follow me here. While each of these miracles has its own unique theological and hermeneutical message, the common message that they all share is that God intends for us to live a long, full life. This is clear. This is clear because all three persons whom Jesus uh, uh, resurrected were young people. He didn't resurrect any senior citizens, and, 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 and to our senior saints who are on this live, no offense intended, uh, uh, no, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, I, I'm just pointing out the obvious that's right here, uh, he didn't resurrect any senior citizens because uh, they had lived out their allotted number of years. He raised up young people who had been tackled by death before they had a real chance to live. In, 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 in the incident recorded in the text of chapter 7 of Luke's gospel, uh, in verse 11 to be uh, particular, Jesus demonstrates to his disciples both then and now that he expects us uh, to develop a ministry that, de that prolongs life. Yeah, he, he, he expects us uh, to develop a ministry that prolongs life. Uh, he entered into the city of Nain. I'm at verse 11. At, at, at the gate of the city, he's coming in and he comes upon a funeral procession. A young man, young man, the only son of his uh, widowed mother is being carried off to his final resting place. 
How often it is uh, that this sad situation is repeated in our community day in and day out. The father, dead and gone, or locked up, or run off somewhere. The young men are not far behind. The wife or the mother is left to grieve alone and make it uh, the best way she can. Meanwhile, the church is sitting silently, looking on helplessly and allowing death to have its way. Well, uh, according to the text, the eulogy had been eloquently delivered. The choir had sung sweetly. The church clerk had read the cards, condolences, and resolutions from the church. Now came that long march to the graveside for the service of committal. The grave is open and waiting. The grave attendant is waiting upon the arrival of the company of mourners. Uh, the numb and grief-stricken mother is drowning in her tears. Uh, they're almost within burying distance when the hopeful word of the text uh, reports that the Lord saw her. Now, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I know I, I, I'm supposed to be painting a wonderful picture, but can I stop and shout somebody real quick? And I promise you, I, I'm really not trying to hurt your feelings, but I'm so glad that Jesus sees us. Yeah, yeah, some of us, some of us, some of us never see anybody who needs our help. Some of us never see anything that needs to be done. Needy people and needy situations can be all around us, staring us right dead in the face, and yet we don't see them. But the Lord saw her where she was. She did not, she did not merely make an impression on the optic nerves of the master uh, in his omniscient eye. Uh, the Lord saw her. He saw her weeping eyes. He saw her sobbing. He saw her broken heart. He saw her dismay about tomorrow. The Lord saw her. And you ought to have, uh, you, you ought to have uh, the blessed assurance in your life bubbling over in your bosom that one day somehow the Lord saw you. Yeah, he sees you when you're hurt. He sees you when your hopes have been busted. He sees you when your anxieties have gotten a hold to you. He sees you when your fears catch you by the neck. He's got that kind of sight that looks beyond your faults and sees your need. Ah, ah, when the Lord, when the Lord, when the Lord saw her. Yeah, yeah, when the Lord saw her. Luke says he had compassion on her. And, and you know what, you know what, we could do so much as a church, we could do so much as people of faith, so much as individuals if we just had a little compassion. Now, now I, I, know, I know you're going to say, Pastor, you fussing us out. No, 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 our problem is that sometimes we just don't care. No, no, at, at, we, we just don't care. At, at, the gate, at the gate of the city, life and death had an eyeball-to-eyeball eyeball confrontation, and life won out because the Lord, the Lord of life, saw and had compassion on a grieving soul. And he came and he touched the bear. And, and they that bore him, uh, they that bear him, or uh, bear him stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. Now, notice the actions and the consequence of the actions uh, uh, of the Lord when he saw. He had compassion. He came. He touched. He said. And he delivered. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a little quick. I, I, matter of fact, I used to be a, a little slow. Sat at the back of class. Didn't hear too well. Didn't listen too well. Let me try that one more time. Uh, notice the actions and the consequence of the actions of the Savior. He saw. He had compassion, he came, he touched, he said, and he delivered. Somebody ought to be ready to glory, give God glory right there. Uh, compassion motivated the Lord to move. He saw and had compassion, so he came. He didn't wait until he could get through uh, to someone else. He didn't stop off somewhere else. And, and the Lord uh, shows us uh, that you don't wait sometimes. And the church is just standing still while we ought to be moving. But, we're, but, 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 but we won't be able, uh, we won't be on the move unless we see something to move for. 
We are not doing anything because we don't see anything. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, we don't see anything because we don't understand that life has to be prolonged. It ought to be, uh, it ought to be helped. In the action of the Lord, he's showing us that we ought to have at least have enough compassion to get on the move and develop a ministry that prolongs life. Well, well, here it is. Uh, there are at least three elements uh, in, in, in such a ministry that, that, that the church must do and should do to prolong life. First of all, we've got to confront the condition. I'm right there. I, I hope you got your Bible still open. Just want to show you a couple of things. Promise you won't mess with you long, and I'll bid you farewell. Have a good evening and a wonderful day. Uh, look at the text. It says, he touched the bear, and they that bare him stood still. Now, uh, somebody probably saying, uh, what in the world is a bear? Well, th this bear w w was a wicker-like couch on which uh, the dead were laid. It was against all religious and social customs to touch this bear, but, but here it is. Jesus breaks through tradition and touches the bear. He confronted the condition of death. If he had not been present with his disciples, they, like us, would simply have stepped aside and allowed the funeral procession in Nain that day to pass on by. But Jesus refused to surrender this young life uh, to death and the grave. He stepped in the way. He touched the bear and the funeral procession came to a screeching halt. Like Jesus, I'm trying to suggest and trying to tell us the church must confront the conditions around us that are carrying us to an early grave. We can't let death declare an open season on us and then do nothing about it. We are, we, 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 we've got to bring our faith, our spiritual gifts, and skills to bear on these death-dealing situations. Matter of fact, since I'm in the ballpark, let me try it one more time. Jesus dares to confront death. He stepped up to death, looked death square in the face. He stepped in the way of death. He stretched out his omnipotent hand and told death, hold up, player, I got this. Yes, he touched the bear and the pallbearers stood still. Death kept pushing and trying to forge ahead and death said, Jesus, if you don't move out the way, I'm, I, I've got a hungry grave to feed. You've got to get out of the way. And Jesus, in effect, says, Death, in order to do that, you've got to come through me. Up he touched the bear and the procession stood still. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting happy myself. If the church would just wake up, stand up, and do something about it, uh, then you could touch life and folks' lives would be changed. There, there it is. There it is. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying not to say nothing to you, but I need to say it so that you can hear me well. If the church would touch the life of the dope addict and tell that dope addict, yes, baby, yes, son, I know you're a family member. I know you've had a hard time. I know it's been down a hard road, but you can come off that stuff. You can even tell the dope pusher, the dope dealer, uh, yep, you got to stop what you're doing, go get you a real job, and stop selling uh, uh, death to our neighbors and friends. If the church would touch the lives of wayward fathers and wayward mothers and then wayward sons and wayward daughters would be still. If the church would intervene and prolong life and stop folk from eating themselves in a stupor and not exercising and not doing what they need, if the church would stand tall in the midst of this vaccine situation, oh, they're trying to kill us, they're trying to drug us, they're trying to put something in us. Child, if they really wanted to get you there, they've got your way before now. Yeah, if the church would intervene and helping people understand, wake up, smell the coffee, there are too many of us brothers and sisters who are dying because of senselessness, because of our foolishness, because of our big headedness, and we need to prolong life, then the undertaker would stop picking us up and we'd stop preparing for death and we'd start preparing for life. Now, uh, this was, this was, this was, this was a bold, untraditional move on the part of Jesus in the face of death. Everybody felt helpless. Hopeless, powerless. Why? Because death has a way 
to pull the life and the joy right up out of you. But death had never met Jesus until this day. Jesus confronts the condition, stop the funeral, uh, stop the funeral procession in its tracks, and if he did it then, he can do it now. Jesus has got the power to bring a halt to death. He can bring a halt uh, to drug addiction. He can bring a halt uh, to chemical dependency. He can bring a halt to sex, or, uh, sex addiction. He can bring a halt to wasted days. He can bring a halt uh, to sitting around being lazy. He can bring a halt to not doing what you need to do. He can bring a halt to be standing still. He can bring a halt to it, whatever it is. Jesus can bring a halt to it and give you a new lease on life. And if we're confident, and if we're confident in the power of Jesus, we can confront the condition and prolong life. It doesn't matter. It, it, yeah, there it is. It, it doesn't matter what the problem is. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter what the society's prognosis is. Jesus can give you extension of your time. He got eternity in his hands. He can stretch time because he is time. He can stretch days into weeks, weeks into months, months into years. Jesus can prolong life. Well, well, uh, that's the first thing. But, but, but then we've got to give, we, we got to give people an, an alternative. Oh, yep, yep. We must give people an alternative. That's the second thing I need to tell you real quick. We must give people an alternative. I, I look at the text. It says, I say unto thee, arise. Not only, not only must we confront the conditions that cause needless death, Jesus shows us here that we must also offer people a life-extending alternative. Our people, our people are caught up in a death-dealing lifestyle because the church has not worked hard enough to give them a life-preserving, life-extending alternative. Except for uh, an hour or two on Sunday, and now that we're in this wonderful COVID uh, pandemic moment, uh, it may not even be an hour. The church is shut down for the rest of the time. We've got to build creative ministries based on the word that teach people how to live, inspire them to live, and challenge them to see a higher vision of what their lives can be if you only change your pathway. That's not only in the natural, as I was telling a sister, uh, of our, a member of our church the other day, not only in the spiritual, but you got to change the stuff in your natural life so that you can live a holistic life. Uh, come here a little while since I ain't getting nothing from y'all uh, right there. I, I'll, I'll go a little Duval on you. You can live your best life if only you do it according to what God gives you. Yeah, they got... We've got to know there is no life apart from the word of God because the word gives life. If you want to live and know what living is all about, you've got to be uh, brought under the authority of the word of God. Jesus, Jesus, uh, Jesus stepped up to the bear and, and he looked into uh, the man's, young man's face. This, that, that, there was, there was, there was paleness in his cheeks his eyes were closed in eternal and everlasting sleep his arms were folded never to swing freely again I don't know how this boy died I don't know if he was gunned down on school ground because somebody uh, wanted uh, to get him back for something he posted on a Facebook post I don't know if he OD'd uh, 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 in some cold dark alley I don't know if he died from AIDS. I don't know if he got sick of hypocritical folk and took himself out because he didn't want to be lied to no more. Over here in Nain, he could have died from anything. I don't know how this boy died, but I do know that Jesus stepped up to the bear. He leaned over, took out his divine keychain, and jangled the keys of death and the grave in the boy's ear. And he said, young man, this is the resurrection and the life talking to you. I came that you might have life. 
I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I know death's got a grip on you, but, but did you know I could set you free? Young man, I say unto thee, I who am the existence of personified life, I who turn the primal lights on and cause primordial darkness to gather up her skirt tails and scamper off in, into the oblivion. I say unto thee, I who am the ground of all being, I the omnipotent maker of all that is, the ultimate destiny of all that would ever be, I say unto thee, I who am all in all, I who is, who is the swiftness in the foot. I am dexterity in the hand. I am strength in the arm. I am the twitching in the eyelids. I am the mind's capacity to comprehend. I uh, say unto thee, uh, I am the soul's satis satisfied feeling. I am life. I am life in all of its abundance. I am the sum total of every component of the parts of life. I am the life in the beginning. I am life in the middle. And when you get down there, I'll be the end. I say unto thee, get up. Arise. Don't stay stretched out in non-existence. If you want to live, hear my word. Get up. Well now, can I put it my way? Not quite there, yeah, there, but I need to hear you. I need you to hear this. Hear this man, this young man in Nain heard the word of the master. Young man obeyed the word. He sat up and he began to speak. He spoke as a man who had staggered his way back to life through the black fog of death. We don't know what he said, but we know he responded to like the life-giving words of the master. Only the word can give life to the word. Only his word can give meaning to life. Only his word has answers to the existential questions of life. Where am I? How did I get here? Where am I going? His word gives us hope. His word gives us faith. And only by his word can we live. Uh, let me give this last thing, and I promise you, it's a, a, it's a chicken-eating day for all of us. Here it is. Third thing, we must remove normal relationships. Yeah, yeah. We, we, no, 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 not remove. We've, we, we, we've got to remove, uh, we've got to remove uh, this, this notion of traditionalism, and we've got to restore Normal relationships. That's where I needed to go. Uh, look at the text. He says he delivered him to his mother. He delivered him to his mother. Uh, you know, Bishop White, Jesus is a great deliverer. After this great victory, Jesus delivers a young man who was dead. Had already had the funeral. They had already bombed him. They were on their way to the grave. He restores this young man to life and delivers him to his mother. This is where he belonged. He was too young to be dead. And at that point in his life, he belonged with his mama. Jesus delivers. Jesus reconciles. Jesus restores normal relationships. Jesus goes back past traditional stuff and he restores stuff to where it should be. Well now, can I tell you, the church got to do the same thing. The breakup of our family life is abnormal. Yeah, we need to build a ministry that prolongs life and restores normal family relationships. Uh, it's abnormal for young people to play cat and mouse game with death as a lifestyle. It's un abnormal uh, for young people and for people in general to play this game with witchcraft and, and Satanism. It's, 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 it's abnormal for us 
uh, as a people uh, uh, for, for us, uh, for black men to go to jail so early and enjoy going to jail and die so soon. It's abnormal, yeah, I said it, for babies to have babies. It's abnormal for you to have a living body and a dead soul. Yeah, it's abnormal for you to walk around thinking nothing is going to get better. It's abnormal for a living, uh, empowered body to know that the word says, I've got power over all things. It's abnormal for you to not believe that the word of God is right. Jesus uh, can put things back together again. Uh, I remember uh, the nursery rhyme says, Humpty Dumpty uh, uh, had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty uh, fell off the wall. And all of the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But now, as I read the word of God, Jesus can put you back together. Jesus can put marriages back together. He can put broken hearts back together. He can bring uh, things back in to normal alignment. Jesus, y'all do know him. Mary's baby, John's first cousin, our soon coming king, El El Yon. Uh, yeah, uh, the Prince of Peace. That's his name. Uh, the bridge over troubled waters. Yeah, Jesus can put marriages back together. Jesus can put broken hearts back together. Jesus can put minds together. I hear grandmama saying he is a mind regulator. He can bring a dead soul back to life. Whatever the issue, whatever the problem, whatever the malady, whatever the sickness, whatever the difficulty, Jesus delivers, Jesus restores, Jesus is able. When Jesus resurrected that young man out there on the outskirts of the city of Nain, he started a fight. He started a fight with death. Death got mad at him. Death leaped up off of the boy and kicked up some dust, spit on the ground and cussed a little bit and pointed his long bony finger at Jesus and said, I'll get you for this. One day I'll get you. And Jesus responded, in my kind of terminology, death, you can try all you want, but if you want me, meet me at Calvary. Calvary, I'll fight you there. We'll settle this living thing and this dying business on Calvary. Death went out to the graveyard and waited on the grave and told the grave, I've got a fella, I'm going to fight tomorrow. I've got a fella that I need you to handle. The attendant was hearing the conversation and the grave asked the attendant, where is death? What is going on? Death said he was going to meet me here. And the attendant reported, he said, he saw a trail of dust in the distance and said to the grave, here comes death now. Grave asked him, is anybody with him? The attendant responded, he's by himself. Grave said, he must have bumped into Jesus because ever since Jesus came to town, business has been mighty slow. But one day, death met him at Calvary's cross. Death met him on yonder hill with nails in his hand. Yonder hill 
with nails in his feet yonder heel with a pierce in his side yonder heel with a crown of thorns on his head death met him death tried his uppercut death tried his low blow death tried his combination death tried his finishing blow he knocked him down he put him down jesus mary's baby yeah that's the one went down one friday you know the story he went down in a grave one friday he he was buried in a borrowed tomb one friday night he stayed there all night friday all day saturday all night saturday night but early i said early early one third day morning jesus our champion jesus our soon coming king jesus grandmama's four day rider jesus mary's baby got up and i heard him say all power is in my hands y'all excuse me i done messed around and then got happy jesus my savior jesus my elder brother got up with victory in his hands and shouted across time and said death where is your sting grave give me that victory yeah i'm alive and fully powerful you ought to shout right now yeah we are a part of a ministry that prolongs life we can step into death situations and speak life because we serve a risen savior he's in the world today i know he's living whatever men may say i know he lives he lives because he lives on the inside of me yes sir yeah give him glory for your story shout right now for your blessing that you are alive and fully functioning death didn't claim you that gunshot didn't kill you that bottle didn't bury you that dope didn't put you down that lie didn't put you under that gossip didn't destroy you that mayhem didn't make you lose your mind you are i said you are you are living yeah shout yeah shout yeah yeah I got life and I got it more. I got life and I have it more abundantly. I got abundant life. I got abundant peace. I got abundant joy because of my Savior. Well, 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 well let, 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 let me just go ahead and say it now. You have it because your life has been prolonged. For that person, for those persons and those people who say, you should have been dead. You tell them, yeah, I should have been, but I am alive. And you ought to be thankful every day that you're alive. You ought to be thankful that you are able to see a new day. Yeah, yeah, and we ought to always glory in the fact great is his faithfulness. New mercies I see every day. You ought to be happy about that thing. 
I know some people are grieving now because of whatever happened, whenever it happened, but you ought to be thankful that you are alive and are able to experience life itself. Why? Because he, he restores normal relationships. You got to believe that thing. You, you, you got to believe that thing. You got to believe it enough to get up and do something about it. Restore some, some child's lifestyle. Restore some marriage, some ministry, some, some family, some senior saint, some, some person who feels that they're all by themselves. Restore them right now. How do I restore them? God, uh, uh, Pastor, I, I can't do it. I'm not God. I'm not Jesus. Yes, you, you've been empowered by the Spirit to be a committee of one to go to somebody and say, hey, do you know the Lord loves you? You got to remind folk you are here on purpose. It's sad that we're taking ourselves out either by suicide, by genocide, by fratricide, by greed, by envy, by mayhem. We don't have any other better business than to, to kill off life. But hey, not on 901 Oakland Avenue. We've already decided. Matter of fact, I'll do the meeting right now since I'm, I'm, I'm chief apostle, senior pastor, head person, teacher. I, I, I make a motion that, that we come against death and all that death wants to do and all the mayhem. Well, brother pastor, I heard what you said. I offer a motion that we do so. I second that motion. Well, motion has been properly second. We're going to do it because God wants us to prolong life. You can't sit there no more in misery and mess talk about what ain't but you got to talk about what is sorry for you grammatically correct folk out there I, 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 wanna, I, I, I know that's my country coming out but it's alright you, you got to talk about what's going on now how, how things are going to get better how things are going to be brighter you got to look at the other side of things the God side of things give life give it more abundantly as the spring as you see the trees already springing forth and the bees buzzing and and and, and the birds chirping and, and and the sky changing and the pollen falling you got to see there's a new spring of life coming forth you got to spring into action I, I know it's time for us to go and I, I want to open the doors of the church but I buried a young man the other week some 42 years old and it wasn't tragic then but it was tragic later to hear somebody say well you know we all going to the same place yes we are but at least we can go in a good way think about the life you have while we were hanging out in in the city of Wilmington three young people were murdered because somebody got upset about something their life was cut off like that what are we doing I'm, I'm not talking about trying to keep kids locked up and, 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 and children locked up and, and tied up but you ought to lay a prayer over their life and lay a ministry to them so that they can come into the right relationship with God not so much for the afterlife but for the right now we've got to change our culture young man went on the killing spree down in Rock Hill just the other day we don't know what happened, but somewhere down the line, there's a church that needs to stand tall and stand up. But well, we didn't know it was going to happen. Hey, you don't know what the devil is up to and what spirit can possess somebody to do something that dastardly and defeating. And why are you talking about that? You just had a crazy nut in the White House that spurred enough folk to think that they could change an election and tear up a Capitol Hill. Come on now. That's a spirit of the enemy. Destruction and division and divisiveness. You got to stand tall in this season and say, come on, we've got to heal what we have. Always talking about we, we want to go back to the way things were. They'll never go back to the way things were, but at least they can be better. Because we can change it for the better. Oh, this old preacher going home now. Maybe there's someone you want to change your life. I want you to give yourself to Jesus today. 
That's right. Give yourself to Jesus. Not to this church, not to anyone here, but we want you to give yourself to Jesus. Come confessing, come believing, come accepting him as your personal Savior. That's right. Believe on Jesus today. He can restore your relationship to its natural state. He can give you an alternative for where you are now. That's right. Whether you're young or old, in between, wherever you are, he can give you something different. Even if you've run off from church, he can give you a new life. Come on back to God. Come on back to him today. I know somebody is going to be reached today. Put your name and number in the comments and we will call you today. We want you saved today. And I'm believing God right now for someone joining our church. That's right. If you got saved, if you're receiving Jesus right now, be a part of the First Mayfield Church. We'd love to be your church home. I'd love to be your pastor. Why don't you come today? He's waiting on you. Why don't you come? Jesus is waiting on you. Come by letter. Come on your Christian experience. Come as a candidate for baptism. Why don't you come? We want your life to be prolonged. Why don't you come? Join Jesus today. Come join our church. Come on, be a part. Stay right there. Now, for those of you who are going to give, we ask that you do so real quick. And not just quickly, but dedicated. Give to God's ministry. If you've been a part of this broadcast, you've heard all of this, why don't you give to support ministry to that, that may be meet in this house. Prove him now herewith that the Lord of hosts can give you more than you can give him. Try the Lord and see. Tithe to this ministry. Send your offerings. If you need to do it digitally, please contact us and we'll get it done. If you need to mail it, our mailing address is available on the, on the Facebook and YouTube page. Why don't you do so today? Come on and give. I need you to give today. If you've already done so, God bless you. If you have not, we want you to do so. It's not how much, it's the dedication that you do it with. Thank you so very much. All right, we're going to get out of here. God bless you. Thank you for joining the First Mayfield Church today. We are so honored and blessed to have you with us. We pray that change has come to your life and that Jesus is changing things for you. May God's blessings be upon your life. Please remember Deacon Simons at 1 p.m. on the teleconference line with Sunday School. Youth Zoom Fellowship, 7 p.m. with Pastor and our YOUTH ministry. We hope and pray that you'll join us at 7. Let's have an awesome time in God. All right, let's look to God to be blessed. Now, Lord, bless us. Send us forth in a kingdom way to know that we're blessed beyond favor. Ah, oh, God, help us understand you prolonging our life give someone what they need today to have a rich and full life restoring normal relationships giving them something in place of what they've been pulled out of and ultimately showing us that we can change now Lord let your peace grace and love go with us now henceforth and forevermore let us all say together amen and amen God bless you have a wonderful day 2021 First Mayfield Church, the year of the relaunch going forward. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.